Football season is upon us and we are big Chiefs fans at our house, so I designed this fun end zone table runner. Let me show you how to make it. Fall is all about football season at my house. We love to get together with family every Sunday and watch the game. And so I thought it was high time that I design a uh, table runner to decorate and celebrate. And so this is what I've come up with. I'm calling it end zone. It's basically a football field and you can customize your end zones to whatever team your heart desires. So I got some novelty Chiefs fabric here. You can of course look up your favorite team or even if you wanted to make one for your local high school, you could just use those colors in each end zone. And it's super simple to make. So let me show you how we did it. First up, you're gonna grab a yard and a half of your green. And the reason that you need this much is we cut it the length of fabric so that there's no seams across the center. So you'll actually have enough to make two middles out of this. So keep that in mind if you wanna make one for you and one for a friend. Then you're going to need a quarter yard of your uh, novelty print. I use the Chiefs. You'll also need a quarter yard of white. You will need a half yard of black for your outer border. I used a roll of the chenille it to do some of this detail and you'll need some of our Missouri Star So Light Fusible. All right, so once you have all your supplies gathered, let me show you how to do this. To start off, we're going to take our green and we are gonna cut that at 20 inches wide by 45 and a half. So I've gone ahead and done that just like so. So you can see I've got this nice big rectangle. And then for our two accent pieces, those are gonna be five inches wide by 20 inches, and we're gonna attach one of these to each end. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine, and we can do that. So one thing you do wanna keep in mind is this Chief's print is directional, so I wanna make sure that my letters are facing towards the end, and so I'm gonna do that on both sides. And so that's exactly right, so we'll just line this up and sew a quarter inch seam all the way down. All right, so now that I have that first side on, I can flip this around and sew my strip to the opposite side. Again, I want the words to be facing towards the end, so, so they're actually facing opposite directions. So I just check by making sure that that looks right and then flipping this over. And then we'll go ahead and sew down this side as well. And I'll meet you right back here. All right, so now we have both of these sewn on. Let's go ahead and give this a good press. Bring it over to the ironing board and I'll roll these back. I'll flip this around to the other side. And at this point, you're gonna wanna take a minute and press the entire center section really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so once you have got this all sewed on each end and pressed really well, we are gonna do some marking. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure over from the seam four and a half inches. And I'm just gonna make a little mark all the way across and that should work out exactly to the number of sections we need for our football field. So I'm just gonna lay this along here, measure four and a half and slide it down. And I am just using this micron pin. If you wanted to use a wash away or heat erasable pin, whatever you want, I just wanted to make sure you guys could see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark all the way down this side and the other side. And then when I get that done, I'll meet you back. All right, so I have marked four and a half inch sections on both this side and this side of the runner. And so now I am gonna go ahead and use my ruler and I'm gonna draw a line 
across. And so this is why I said you'd probably want to use, you know, a wash away or some type of marking tool that you wouldn't see long term, but I wanted to make sure you guys could see what I was doing for the tutorial. So I'm just using a micron pen. And so we are just going to draw those lines all the way across. And these are going to be our reference guides for where we're going to add our chenillet. So we will just draw each of these across the center of our runner. All right, and one more. Mark this last little section. Okay, so now we have the middle of our runner all divided up into our field like we need it to be. And so now we can open up our chenillet and it comes on a roll just like this. And what's really cool about this product, if you're not familiar with it, is it basically is like a bias ribbon. You can kind of angle it and move it however you want. For this project, we're just doing straight lines, but it's really adaptable to whatever you're using it on. And as you wash it, this is just gonna fray up and give you some great texture, which is super, super fun. And so that's what I decided to use for the lines on the field. It kind of gives you that grass texture that you might have on a real football field. So we can go ahead and measure these out to 20 inches. I just like to sit the roll in my lap and use my scissors and cut as I go. So we are just gonna add a strip to each of these. I'll probably just do a few to get us started and then I'll meet you back here when that's done. So let's line this up. First things first, we're actually gonna sew right on the seam line where we meet our print fabric. So I'm just gonna line this up here and sew straight down the center. And the beautiful thing about this is you don't have to worry if it gets a little crooked as you wash it and it frays. It's just gonna hide that, those stitches anyway. There we go, there's our first one. So I'll just grab my scissors I have right under here and I can just trim this off and then we'll just keep working down the runner and add a few more. So I do like to make sure I'm starting my needle right where I drew that line. And then just keep my chenille centered over that and go right down the middle. Making sure I'm right over the middle of that line. There we go. I like to just adjust as I go, make sure I'm keeping that centered. So you get the idea. Chenille is so easy to use. It's super forgiving. And so you're just going to continue adding those strips all the way down the center until you've completed it all the way across. And you can see what that's going to look like before we wash it. It doesn't fray up at all. You can kind of run over it with your finger and you can get an idea of how it's going to look, but really the magic comes in the wash. So now let's move on to the applique.
So we're gonna start on the applique and to do that, we're gonna grab whatever um, fusible you, you're using. I am using that Missouri Star So Light. You could use Heat and Bond, whatever you have available to do some iron-on applique. And so we're gonna begin by taking the numbers that are in the pattern and tracing those onto the wrong side of our fusible. And so that's this papery side, the bumpy side is the glue. So you'll want to make sure that your numbers are reversed and you'll trace them here. So I have a few of those that I've already traced. You can see right here. And then once you trace them, you iron them on to your white fabric. And so these are already pressed onto the white fabric and now I can just go ahead and cut them out. So let's grab our scissors and we will just cut a few of these and we can just cut right on the line, just like so. And then you can see how when you flip it over, it's gonna be right sides, which is what we're looking for. And so you're going to need 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then you're gonna count down the other direction, 40, 30, 20, 10. And you'll do that on both sides. And so the pattern includes all the numbers that you need. I have a few already cut out and ready to go. So you can see right here, I'm gonna actually nestle these numbers up quite close to my chenille it, but then I like to use my ruler and make sure I'm about a half inch from the edge because I wanna make sure that these are not gonna get caught in my seam and I'm still gonna have some space here. And so this is kind of what I'm looking for. And so if you have a paper backing on your numbers, you can go ahead and peel those off, which this fusible that I used did some of them do, some of them don't. Just like so. Just making sure that I'm staying a half inch away from that bottom edge. And then we can take these over to the iron and give it a good press. You would do this for all of the numbers on your runner. So let's go over here and just press this down to make sure they stay in place. Perfect. Now for mine, I just did a straight stitch to finish off these numbers just because I didn't want anything too crazy. You could do a tiny little zigzag or a blanket stitch if you want, but let's go ahead and just straight stitch these down. And because it's a table runner, I do want to really secure these because it's going to get washed. I'm going to put food on it. I want to make sure it's really durable. So I do recommend doing some sort of top stitching on your applique. So as I get to this corner, I'm going to leave my needle down and I can just pivot. And make my way around the number. And I'm just stitching as close to that edge as I can. And this is gonna be probably the most time consuming part, but just take your time. I think you'll be surprised at how quickly it comes together. And just make sure you have the bulk of the runner out of your way as you're stitching. You don't wanna accidentally stitch over something. And then I will back stitch just a little there and trim my threads. And so there we go. We have stitched all the way around that one. So let's go ahead and go around the zero as well. So we will do the inside and outside of this number. So when you're doing a curve, you just have to kind of slow down and ease around. So I'm just gently moving my fabric as I take a stitch. And sometimes it gets to a point where I decide I wanna stop with that needle down and just pivot a little bit more. Again, making sure I have the bulk out of the way. And 
And I'm just watching right by the needle, just doing a tiny bit at a time. So let's go ahead and do the inside and then our numbers will be all stitched down. There we go. Got that all stitched down. You can see how nice that looks. I'll just go back and trim those threads. Where did I put my scissors? There they are. So we'll just trim those and then it is ready to go. I don't mind the straight stitch on this one, which will fray a little bit. Just keep that in mind. Because I'm gonna have the fray on the chenille it, I think it'll just really go together. And so that's exactly what I was looking for. If you're not a fan of that, by all means use a blanket stitch or a satin stitch to really secure that in place. So now, once you've completed all of that for all of your numbers, you're just going to add your border, just like I've done here. I just used a two inch border and then I quilted it with just a simple meander. I used more of my Chiefs fabric on the backing and then just bound it off and it is ready to go. And you can see how nicely it starts to fray as you wash it, which I think is super fun. So I can't wait to use this for all of our football parties this fall. And I hope you will give it a try and make it for your very own sports team. I can't wait to see it. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.